Hey, welcome to church. We love our home chapel. My name is Ju, all the way from Oahu at Inspire Church, and Pastor Kelly and Angie Hildebrand. We love you so much. What an honor it is that I get to share God's word with you today. And can I tell you that you have brothers and sisters that are praying and fighting the good fight of faith with you? You know, Pastor Kelly has a audacious. Bold prayer that he would reach one million people for Christ by 2025. Wow, come on, can we just give him a hand? What an amazing faith. You know, we are praying with you as I know the last two years has been crazy, right, church? But you are here and you're not afraid and you are pressing forward. Good for you. Keep gathering. Don't give up. Get into your small groups. I'm so proud of you, Home Chapel. And I just want you to know that we are here with you, cheering you on and believing God's promises for you, your life. So come on, I'm excited to share today's word that God has placed in my heart. That, But would you please pray with me? Father in heaven, we thank you for our Home Chapel. Thank you that today you have a word a word to transform, a word to heal. Father, you have a word for your sons and your daughters to come home, God, to hear the love of God in their hearts. And today, Father, we ask that we would surrender everything, every distraction, every worry to you, and that we would lean in and listen to your word. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You know, today, title of the message is, For When I Am Weak, then I am strong. In 2 Corinthians 12, verse 9 through 10, Paul says this, that each time he asked Jesus, my grace is all you need. My power works best in weakness. So now, Paul says, I am glad to boast about my weaknesses so that the power of Christ can work through me. That's why I take pleasure in my weaknesses and in the insults and hardships and persecutions and troubles that I suffer for Christ. For he says this, for when I am weak, then I am strong. For when I am weak, then I am strong. You know, I used to hide my weaknesses. I was embarrassed of my weaknesses. I was always trying to hide my shame. I didn't like that I suffered. I didn't like my past, the abuse that I had to endure. And I always tried to hide my struggles because I didn't want others to see me as weak. I thought, you know, weak people would never succeed. I used to think in my head that weak people, they only get hurt. I thought weak people were people that other people would hate, and so I would always try to hide my weaknesses. Church, do, do you have weaknesses? Do you have struggles? Do you have pain and issues that often you try to hide? If you do, I just want to share great news with you today that God says in His Word that His Word and His power and His grace works best not when I am strong, but when I am weak. And my weakness that I tried so hard to hide was I really believed for over 30 years of my life that I was just not good enough. I always compared myself to people and I always thought, man, if I was just a little bit taller, you know, if I was just a little bit prettier, if I looked like her, you know, if I was just smarter, if I had finished college, if I even went to college, you know, I believed in life that I didn't even deserve good things. I thought that I would never be chosen for anything good, that if people left my life and I was abandoned or rejected, it, it was my fault. That's what I thought. I, 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 I felt like I didn't deserve to be liked. I didn't deserve to be loved. I believed that I did not even deserve to live and that I was, I was just a mistake that I was even born. And you know, the enemy comes to steal, kill and destroy. And if the enemy cannot get rid of us while we're still in our mother's womb, guess what? The enemy will begin to wage war, full-blown war against you from the moment that you take your first breath. And here's what I truly think that when a baby is born and, and they take their 
their first breath, right? And they start crying. I think that they're giving praise back to our Creator, just thanking Him for the life that He gave us. But what does the enemy do? From the moment you're born, he tries to knock you down, right? He tries to discourage you, to bring pain and trials, and he lies to you from the very beginning. Why? Why does he try so hard? It's because he wants you to live your life against God. So that you would never come to know Jesus and the power of the cross, which is his love. I was one when my mom decided to run away. With, she took my youngest sister she had just given birth to. And she left me and my siblings to my, my really abusive and very violent dad. I, I don't know why, but she just left. And so growing up, I never heard like, I love you. I, I never felt a hug or an embrace when I was hurt. I, I didn't even have friends. I was just a loner. I had no one to turn to and I just felt I was in prison my whole life. And I felt weak for so many years of my life. I was suffering from depression. I was I had anxiety. I, I, I just had so much unforgiveness, anger, hatred, like bitterness. It just like bound me up. And I just felt like life was worthless. And from third grade, from fourth grade, I was very suicidal. And in that dark, dark pit, Christ found me. Jesus found me. And today I'm, I'm standing here to declare that I'm not perfect. I still have weakness, but I want to declare to you that God is our hope, that he has chosen you and created you to be his masterpiece. If you are in that space that I was, I want you to know that Jesus loves you and that you are more than enough. And because of God, I believe that goodness and unfailing love is pursuing me. I used to think death and bad luck and bad things were always chasing after me. But man, after I came to know God and he set me free, I believe that goodness and unfailing love is what pursues me all the days of my life. And my hope is that my, my, my story would give you some inspiration. It would give you hope. It would help you to release forgiveness, to surrender and trust God. And that you would give God your whole heart and your whole life to Him. Because truly, He is a good, good Father. And you might be weak today. But I want you to know that in Christ, that you are more than a conqueror. Come on, repeat after me. I am more than a conqueror. Okay, that was a little bit weak sauce, but maybe at the end of this message, you will believe with me that you are more than a conqueror in Christ. And in Romans 8 verse 37, it says, Yet in all these things, Paul says, what is all these things? Everything you are going through, no matter how weak you feel, in all these things, right now not tomorrow but right now we are more than conquerors through him who loved us come on jesus says that you are more than a conqueror through him who loved us and i just want to highlight the key to becoming more than a conqueror and it's these two words underlined it's him and it's us conquers through him who loved us it's not just you and jesus and just me and jesus against the whole world because i used to be a christian who thought okay i just only need god that's all i need and I, the world is against me but i just need god and god was like no 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 it is not just you and me it's him who loved us it's you it's jesus and others and who's the others it's your village it's your church it's your community and not the world, it's the enemy. Because we don't fight flesh and blood, church. We fight the spiritual evil forces of the unseen world. It says in Ephesians 6, 12, we fight against those powers in the dark world, against evil spirits in the heavenly places. It's you, Jesus, and others. We fight together. Come on, victory is found in the village. And we are in a spiritual battle. And I want you to know right now that if you have been thinking that the world is against you and that you have Jesus and you're trying to be fighting it on your own, you cannot do this alone. You, know, you have to stop isolating. 
Stop pushing people away. Stop canceling. Stop rejecting. Stop ignoring. Stop thinking as long as Jesus loves me, I'm good. No, you're not. There is power in the village called our home chapel. There is power in the village. Salvation, yes. Your salvation is in Jesus Christ alone. But can I tell you that victory, your healing, your freedom is in the village? I mean, even Jesus said in Matthew 18 verse 20, For where two or three gather in my name, there I am with them. Here's why. For when you are weak with temptations, guess what? You find strength as people pray for you, encourage you, keep you accountable, who walk with you. Who's walking with you right now? For when you are weak with insecurities, guess what? You are strong when your village speaks God's truth and breaks the lies of the enemies over your life. Who is a village that is speaking God's truth in your life? Who is breaking the lies of the enemy over your life? For when you are weak, church, in faith, you find strength in hearing stories of how God has changed their crazy messes into a message for Jesus that, that you hear about people suffering, but God used their suffering to bring success and failures. The enemy will beat you down with failures, but have you heard the story of how God used failures to fulfill God's purpose and plan for their lives. We're not meant to stay weak. We are created to be more than conquerors in Christ Jesus. There is victory in the village. Come on, check out what Ecclesiastes 4 verse 9 through 12. Check out what this verse says. It says, two people are better off than one, for they can help each other succeed. But if one person falls, the other can reach out and help. But someone who falls alone, that person is in real trouble. Likewise, two people lying close together can keep each other warm. But how can one be warm alone? A person standing alone can be attacked and defeated. But look at this verse. Two stand back to back and conquer. Three are even better for a triple braided cord is not easily broken. So when we are weak, church, how can we be strong? I believe this verse is telling you to go and find some godly friends. So if you have your notes today, point one is this. When we are weak, how can we be strong? Point one, find godly friends. Be intentional. Forget about chemistry, okay? Never mind, don't just sit around with this poster board, I need a friend, and just sit around and you think the perfect person's gonna come around. It's not. The perfect person is not gonna all of a sudden magically appear. You have to go find them. And you say, where? Join a small group at your church serve on the team what's your what is your spiritual gift that god has given you because that is your superpower from heaven you know moses had aaron ruth had naomi david had jonathan elijah had elisha daniel remember daniel had shadrach meshach and abednego jesus even did not do it alone he had peter john james mary martha lazarus paul paul had priscilla aquila timothy these godly men and women of God did not do life alone. They went and did life with friends. You cannot do this alone. You have to find friends, godly friends, because loneliness is just a choice. I know that's hard to hear, but loneliness is a choice. You're choosing to be lonely. Get involved. Put yourself out there. Mother Teresa says this, the, the mother who has clothed those that are poor who has fed those who are hungry she said this is this is her quote the most terrible poverty is loneliness and the feeling of being unloved jesus came to give you salvation but he left the church your village so that you would not have poverty of loneliness how can you be weak and but, but find strength again? Point two is this. Become the friend you wish you had. Don't just go looking for godly friends. Be the friend you wish you had. I find that many people actually don't know how to be a good friend. We want 
this amazing friend, but we ourselves aren't willing to be that friend. So many people just wait, right, for good things to happen. But I say, go do good things and good things will happen. Don't be like those people who are just like waiting for the lottery. I can't, I'm going to be rich. I'm going to be, I'm, gonna, I'm just going to wait for the lottery. No, no. Most people will just go get a job, right? And then you'll go ask the Lord for wisdoms, wisdom to grow your income, to grow that church, to grow the company, to grow your business. So can we just stop wishing? you had friends and be the friend you wish you had be that friend here's a good start this is what paul said start by sharing your weaknesses come on take off that mask take off the facade be glad it says in second corinthians 12 verse 9 to boast about my weaknesses why so that the power of christ can work through us you know when paul boasted about his weakness to the church of corinth because this is who he was speaking to at that time you know when he was sharing about his weaknesses it wasn't like oh wow everyone's sharing about weaknesses no it was very countercultural. it wasn't popular at all he was taking a risk in sharing his weaknesses the risk of being looked down and losing face because Corinth was actually a very successful but a very materialistic and intellectually proud city because these people just only wanted to show perfection, only wanted to show what was their highlight reel, right? This world teaches us to show off our strength. Look, come on. Don't show your weaknesses, show your strength. You know, come on, post on your Instagram, post on Facebook, all the highlights and brag about your successes. But can I tell you that real friends are not embarrassed about the past. They're not ashamed to admit their mistakes and their failures. And I, I'm just wondering today, that, that I'm just wondering which friend needs to hear that they are not alone. Which friend needs to hear that they are not alone? Become the friend you wish you had. Learn to be vulnerable. Can you be open and honest with someone? Be authentic and genuine. Come on, stop being perfect. No one is perfect. Don't run away from having hard conversations. Learn to take down your guard share your heart with someone and you might be sitting there right now and saying well well pastor jew i'm i just want you to know that you have no idea how much people have betrayed me backstabbed me laughed at me i do actually i do i do understand that you may have been betrayed and people might have used you and used what you have said against them and have backstabbed you but you can't let your past stop your future risk again forgive again share again open your heart again become the friend you wish you had by learning to be vulnerable the second thing is this learn to really listen well <laughs> i'm not a very good listener i had to learn to listen well because i just wanted to fix people but i realized people just want to be heard to be understood and not to be fixed I had to learn how to have an open heart. Even if I don't agree with them, I wasn't jumping to disagree. I was just trying to understand and have an open perspective. I had to grow my empathy. And you know, I had to learn to be interested, to be curious, to be enthusiastic when somebody shares something that I'm just really not interested in because Philippians 2 verse 4, I had to memorize this. Let each of you look not only to his own interests, but also to the interests of others. Learn to listen. The third thing and how to be that amazing friend, third tip is this, learn to build trust. Here's a big one, gossip, stop gossiping. Are you someone that is trustworthy to keep a confidence, to keep something that someone has shared and not share with everyone else? In fact, don't even just not gossip, Here's another level. Don't even listen to gossip. Don't judge a book by its cover or someone's character by one thing that they messed up on. Sometimes we like to think that we know the whole person by just a little bit that we know. No, learn to look beyond the cover. Extend forgiveness when you need to. Don't forget. Don't forget how much Jesus has forgiven you 
How much times Jesus says you must forgive? Not just seven times, 77 times seven. Be a person of your word. You want to know how to build trust? Say what you mean and mean what you say. Here's a fourth tip on how to be the friend that you wish you had. It's learn to love people by serving them, by being generous, by sharing truth, but always in love, by being kind, showing grace, showing mercy you know john 15 verse 13 says there is no greater love than to lay down one's life for one's friends here's what i learned that our weakness is the beginning of god's strength now i understand why paul says boast he is glad to boast about his weakness because my weakness is the beginning of god's strength working through me and in 2 Corinthians 12, verse 10, he's, he goes on to say, that's why I take pleasure. Wait, 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 what? He takes pleasure. Not just now, he's not just boasting about the weakness. He takes pleasure in weakness. <sighs> pleasure in weakness when he's going through insults, hardships, persecutions, troubles, when he suffers for Christ. Because he says, for when I am weak, then I am strong. Honestly, this is so hard for me to believe or understand. I was like, really, Paul? Okay, I, okay. boast about my weakness. Okay, I, I can learn to accept my weaknesses because God's power works for me, but take pleasure in my weakness. The definition of pleasure is, is to be happy, to find satisfaction, to delight, to find enjoyment in my sufferings. Come on, if you're like me and you slow down and you read, how do I take pleasure? How do I find satisfaction? How do I even take delight in the things of pain, the things that I'm going through? And I really had to sit down and ask the Lord to help me truly understand this because every word of God is flawless and it proves true, right? It says in Proverbs 30 verse five that his word is true, it's flawless. It says in Hebrews 6, 8 that God doesn't lie. So that means that Paul's not lying because Second Timothy 3.16 says all scripture is God breathed. So Paul wasn't just saying, just saying pleasure, just to be like, sound good. No, he was telling the truth that he really, truly takes pleasure, delight, enjoyment, satisfaction in this. Wow, how is this possible? I just want to share some scripture with you in James. Even James agrees with Paul to say, consider it pure joy my brothers and sisters whenever you face trials of many kinds because you know that the testing of your faith produces perseverance let perseverance finish its work so that you may be mature complete lacking nothing okay okay here's another verse for you second corinthians 4 verse 8 through 9 it says we are hard pressed on every side but not crushed perplexed but not in despair persecuted but not abandoned struck down but we are not destroyed first peter even peter agrees with paul to say in 5 verse 10 and the god of all grace come on the grace that is perfect in our weakness who called you to his eternal glory in christ after you have suffered just a little while will himself restore you and make you strong firm and steadfast 2 Corinthians 4, 7, it says, For our light and momentary troubles are achieving for us an eternal glory that far outweighs them all. Finally, in John 16, verse 33, Jesus himself says, I have told you all this. What is all of this? Everything that he knew that we would go through in life so that you may have peace in me. But not just peace. Read on. It says this, Here on earth, you will have many trials and sorrows. Come on, church, but take heart. Take heart because Jesus has overcome the world. Come on, read that again with me. For Jesus has overcome the world. Come on, I, I think I understand just a little bit about what Paul is saying. Yeah, I, I don't suffer in vain because because here's the reality with or without god this world is full of trials and sorrows this world is full of suffering and weakness i mean even without god there is suffering but here's the thing church how does paul take pleasure 
because of what Jesus has done on the cross. Because of what he has done, my pain, my light and momentary trouble is, has a greater purpose. It, what the enemy meant for evil, guess what? What the enemy meant to steal, kill and destroy your life, guess what? God will now use it for his glory. He's going to use it for his purpose. He will use it for his promises and his, his promise and plan of redemption. It is God's strength. It is by his power that I'm able to find pleasure in weakness, in insults, in hardships, in persecution, and in suffering because Christ has overcome the world. I am so thankful to know that everything that I've been through and everything that I'm going through now, it's only greater power for God to do a mighty work, not in just my life, but in my family, in my friends, in the church, in people's lives around the world. My, in fact, I look back at everything that I've been through and I'm not saying, man, I, I wish I didn't go through that, man. Why did I have to go through that? You know what? I find myself thanking God. Thank you, Lord, that I was able to now understand her pain because of what I've been through how you have healed me, how you have given me your grace and your strength and your power. In fact, I'm thankful. I understand that Paul takes pleasure in those. Why? Because in his power and in his strength, I am able to do more than I could ever imagine or dream of. Come on, church, through him, through him, our home chapel, you are his own special possession. You are chosen, handpicked by God, who created everything. You are treasured. You are irreplaceable. You are loved beyond comparison. You are worth dying for. Guess what? You are forgiven, forgiven. You are his child. You're not just that your mom and your dad's child. You're not just your, your family's um, brother and sister. No, you are a child of God. You are secured for all eternity you are set free you are precious to him you are set apart you are righteous you are a saint you are a new person in jesus christ guess what you are gifted loved you are heard blessed you are an overcomer you are more than a conqueror in christ come on can you celebrate with me that yes for when i am a weak Yes, Lord, I am strong. Oh, it feels so good. I mean, it feels so good to wake up and know that I don't even have to try to be strong anymore. I don't have to fake it till I make it. I don't have to put on a mask or be fake or half a sod. I don't have to try so hard to be a Christian because I was trying so hard my whole life, you know? I don't have to be trying so hard to be good because Jesus has already won. I am fighting now from a place of victory, not a place where I am lost. No longer do I need to try to be so strong anymore. I, in fact, I'm tired of trying to be my own strength. So tired of trying to fake it till I make it, trying to make everyone believe that I'm perfect, try so hard to be a good Christian. No, you don't have to try too hard so hard to be good because jesus has already won so here's the good news you don't have to try anymore guess what we don't try we train we train with our village and with jesus as our ultimate coach first timothy 4 verse 7 through 8 says train yourself to be godly Whew, come on, train yourself to be godly. For physical training is of some value, but godliness has value for all things, holding promise for both the present life and the life to come. You do not have to do life alone. Be the friend that you wish you had by finding godly friends in small group, at church, while serving, get involved. And here's how you can train every day with your village. Every day when you wake up, here's how you can train. Train every day by starting with these three things. Kind of like breakfast, lunch, and dinner. But train with God's word, by prayer, and by praise. Come on, train it every day by the word, by prayer, and by praise. And you will find 
that you were once weak, but you're not staying weak. You were once weak, but now you are strong. And I want to pray right now for you, church, if you have felt and understood my message that, yeah, I, I've been weak. I'm, in fact, before today, I was ready to give up. Don't give up. Don't give up. Your victory is one moment away. I want to pray for you, for those, as it says in Isaiah 40, verse 29, it says that He gives strength to the weary and it increases the power of the weak. You are not meant to stay weak, church. You are designed to be more than a conqueror. If you would, right where you are, would you please extend your hand out and just receive, receive the strength that God has for you. Father, I lift up your sons and daughters right now. God, we are confessing of our weaknesses. Father, we are weak, but we need your grace. And I pray right now all across the room where they are in that moment right now, Holy Spirit, come. Come, Lord. Remind them that they are a new creation. Father, remind them that they are loved, that you are for them and not against them. Lord, that, that you don't despise weakness. In fact, you love when we come to you needing help, when we come to you in weakness, for it is then your grace is made perfect. So come breathe, Holy Spirit. Breathe grace, love, and strength. And Lord, may today they walk in the light and life and the power of Jesus Christ. In your name we pray. Come on, church. We all say amen.